Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and I'll be narrating this Pure to Spring software FAQ video. This is the 15th in the series, and I'm happy you're joining me. The subject of this video is avoiding or getting rid of the specified file was not found error. For purposes of demonstrating this video, I've got our probate forms app up on the screen. And although this can apply to any application, I'm going to open a file and I'm clicking on the file menu and then on the open item and the open file dialog appears. If all is well, you should see your client files if, if you have any. As you can see, I don't have much in the client files folder because uh, it's what Paul McCartney called a clean machine. The files you see here are only the ones that are installed with the probate program. Again, if you've been using the program, you should see all of your client BP-8 files here. Now here's the problem. I select the test file and I click on the open button and I get the error message, the specified file was not found. You see it on my screen right now. My first reaction would be, not necessarily in this order, what the heck? These aren't the old DOS days. I didn't type in a long path name and make a mistake. I selected the file from a list. There wasn't any typing involved. I know the file is there because I saw it. How could it not be found? There's one answer to all these excellent points. In the words of TV detective Adrian Monk, here's what happened. You created a place on the shared drive to store client files, and that's probably when things started going wrong. When I see it in technical support, it's usually because someone is trying to set things up on a network. As an aside, there's an FAQ video, I think it's number six, on this very subject, and one thing we recommend is when you create the client file storage folder on the shared drive, and it's the whole key here, don't forget to make sure the default file is there. What's the default file? Well, we've got a different FAQ video on that subject, so I won't go into the details here, but if you want to know how using the default file can save you time, take a look at number three in the FAQ series. Now, when this error occurs, the first thing to check is that the default file is where it belongs. So let's take a look. I'm going to click again on the open button, or use the open button. I think I used the file menu last time. Use the open button this time. And what we see there are three files, sample, test, and X default. And as you may have guessed, I put the X in front of the default file name so it wouldn't be recognized by the application as the default file that I've been talking about. And that's the problem. The app was looking here for the default file, and it wasn't there. To fix the situation, I'm going to put the default file back where it belongs, and I'll do that by simply changing the name of this file back to default. Now, of course, if you try this, you won't have an X default file to restore by simply doing what I did. So what will you do? Well, first thing is you'll need to look all over your system. Uh, the likely place, of course, is your C drive. And, and look for that, you know, do a system search for the default.bp8 file. Now, the location where the app puts it when it's first installed, that's C colon backslash Puritus backslash BOPF8, backslash files. And you can still see the path at the top of the open file dialog there. Now, if you changed the um, installation option related to that storage location, the default file probably won't be where I just mentioned, but at least you should look there first. If it's not there and you can't find it, probably the easiest thing to do is to reinstall the application and let the installation process put it back where it belongs. Well, anyway, now that I've made sure the default file is where it's supposed to be, let's not prolong the suspense anymore. Let's try to open the test file like we did before and see if we still get the error. At this point, there should be something like a drum roll, I suppose, to uh, increase the an anticipation. But let's just go and click on the open button. 
No error message. The problem is solved. And that's it. But before I go, I, I want to remind you to take a look at that default file FAQ video that I mentioned. And also, if you're interested in law office computing tips like the ones we put in our annual issue, hard copy of the Law Office Computing Magazine, or our monthly email newsletter, you'll be interested in a book called The Best of Law Office Computing. It's not specific to Pure to Springs products. It covers all subjects related to law office computing, hence the name. It's got all the best tips from years of back issues, so I'm sure you'll find it entertaining and the tips and hints useful. You can get the ebook at Amazon for only $9 and the paperback for only $12. In conclusion, I thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. I hope uh, we've made your life in the law office a tiny bit easier, and I hope you visit us again. And until you do, I wish you all the best. Take care.